Okay, so a huge welcome to our chapter four. I can't believe we're actually halfway through the book club already. Um, and I'm so loving kind of being here and sharing these different bits of the book and giving opportunity for everyone to meet, to ask questions, to support each other. Um, so far, the book clubs have been so great because all the comments that you're sharing and the kind of um, questions that you're asking have been really helpful. And the people who are watching and catching up on YouTube um, and on the website as well, it's been lots of brilliant emails thanking not just myself and Evie but also for those of you who are asking questions and things so a massive thank you to you for really supporting us and engaging and sharing your experience in our book club session so far so today we're looking at um, chapter four which is all about how we kind of work with engaging and evaluating so another way of kind of thinking of that is how we offer assessments that are a little bit creative or a little bit outside the box maybe and another way that I like to think of these is to think of them as like really intuitive and organic they happen very organically within a session so it's not like we've got to look for a form for that in some ways it's more like oh, okay I'm just going to think of a color or a metaphor or a name or a number or a symbol here that's going to help this client to kind of express to me a little bit more about what's going on for them right now in this space. This is really great if you're working with clients who are trying to find ways to tell you how anxious they feel in the moment. So for instance, on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is really highly anxious and zero is nothing at all, where would you put yourself on that? Or maybe they work in color or song. So if there was a song that represented this kind of feeling of anxiety you've, you're struggling with at the moment, what's what song would that be? So again, bringing in any interest that the client has into this, and we can use that throughout assessing and how we engage with clients too. So really, really beautiful ways of doing that. So as we get started, just a quick uh, reminder of our tension settings for the space. So we invite you to please be a little curious, to be open to new ideas, to be playful with us, have a go, kind of let us know what you're thinking and feeling and how many questions that you have throughout the session too. Um, and of course, to be mindful of confidentiality. When, we, when you share comments with us, we won't kind of say your name because this is being recorded. So if we read out a comment, we won't use your name with that, just to add that little bit of confidentiality. If at the end of the session, we do have a little bit of time and space to kind of pop into a breakout room, it hasn't happened in the last two sessions because things have just been really full in the session. And we ask that you really respect that confidentiality in the room if we do end up in a private discussion within the end. Um, but apart from that, we ask you to just be open and to just share your experience with us as we're moving through as well. Evie's here to support so if she sees any questions or any comments as we move along she'll kind of mention those as well so that uh, we don't miss anything as we're moving through. So again this is on chapter four engage and evaluate if you've got the book it's from uh, page 79 and we're going to look at some of the things in the book but also I've added a few extra slides here um, for some other things that haven't been kind of added in the book too. So in the book, we look at lots of different things uh, through creative assessments. So it talks a lot about um, kind of the differences and maybe looking at your core forms, um, GAD forms, your PHQ forms, these kinds of forms that we use often when we start working with clients. It looks at the difference of that versus kind of creative in the moment, um, out of the box, kind of intuitive ass assessments. So what we're looking at tonight in the book club are these more kind of organic, intuitive, creative type questions, basically, or little prompts that help clients to explore that a little bit more. So as we get started tonight, I'd love to invite you to kind of spend a few moments with me being creative for yourself. You're not going to have to share anything with anyone. Um, this is literally just a moment for you, a little kind of on the spot assessment to see where you are at the moment and to offer something just to be a little bit creative with us. So if you've got a paper and pen, that would be really wonderful. If you need a moment, you can pop now and get a piece of paper and a pen or colors if you'd like to work with those two. And I'm gonna introduce you to an exercise that I love to use with clients, but also my coaching and counseling clients, I work with this really well. A brilliant exercise for teens and young people. You can change up the language. It's a really simple concept and invite clients to kind of take ownership of this exercise too. So what I'd love you to do is to take a blank page or piece of paper, or if you're doing this digitally, you can do it online too, and create a circle in the center and what I usually title it is creating a life I love. 
So very often when people come into therapy, there's this sense of maybe not being so in love with life right now for whatever reason that is. So let's look at creating that life that you love. And in the sense of this, we're looking at a client really beginning to share some of their goals and their hopes um, for being in therapy and how we might be able to support them. But for today, we're just going to have a little bit of fun with this. So I invite you to take a page, create a circle somewhere in the center or anywhere you like, entitled Create a Life I Love. We're going to take about maybe about eight to ten minutes on this this evening. So I'd invite you then to add as many circles as you need to your paper to explore what you need to do this to help you to create the life that you love. Might be one circle, might be ten, might be any number of circles for you. So I'm going to go nice and quiet for a little bit and we're going to kind of connect in about five minutes and just be intuitive and playful with this and see where you get to. So I'm going to give you five minutes to do this. And if you've got anything to share in the chat, please do keep sharing with us. If you've just, just joined us, the screen's not frozen. We're just working very gently on an exercise to kind of get ourselves started this evening. So if you just follow some of the prompts on the screen, take a blank page, create a circle in the center titled Create a Life I Love. And add as many circles as you need to your paper to explore what you need or what you feel you need to do this. And you won't be sharing this with anyone. It's just an exercise for yourself unless you want to share something in the comments. And yeah, could you give us some examples of the kind of things that people might put in their circles? Absolutely. So if you're thinking maybe about relationships, maybe there's changing a routine in your life that doesn't feel like it's really gelling with your life at the moment. So something about your day you'd like to, like to shift up. Maybe it's a new career. Maybe it's traveling a little bit more. Maybe it's about eating healthy and feeling healthier. Maybe it's about growing self-esteem. Um, maybe it's about reconnecting with a hobby that you absolutely loved and for some reason you stopped. So the possibilities are endless and totally personal to you as a person. And be intuitive with it. Just go with it and see what happens with your circles. It's not set in stone. It's just in this moment right now what that is for you. Great question. Okay, just a couple more minutes there to kind of explore a little bit. Okay. While you're exploring that and adding to your circles, maybe. And remember, this is something you can continue away from this as well. I would usually invite clients then to think about um, some of the kinds of things in their life that's causing um, any blocks or fears or challenges that they might expect to face. This is where we're really looking at um, how much belief clients have within themselves to be able to actually achieve these things and to meet these things. Maybe there's fear of failure. Maybe there's not having enough financial freedom to be able to travel as much as they want to. Uh, maybe there's kind of a, some kind of challenge that have, they haven't even thought of yet until they're given the space to sit and kind of really connect with that in some ways. 
So what we're assessing for here is their goals and looking for what they're hoping to achieve and how we might be able to support them through the therapeutic process to be able to achieve some of those or even rewrite some of those. Because maybe by the end of the therapy sessions, um, there's an understanding that actually the original goals weren't really the ones that the client wanted to focus on for some reason. As you go through the sessions, these might change. So just having to think, even if you can maybe identify one or two challenges, blocks or fears that you might have, just to kind of experience this. Again, we always say we would never offer anything to a client we haven't experienced ourselves. And so all of these different assessments we talk about this evening, I've experienced them myself, I've worked with them in my own therapy and in my supervision as well. And so I'm kind of really confident at offering these out to clients as well. So while we're looking at this with a client, I would then invite the client to explore these together. So have you ever experienced challenges like this before, especially if they're specific challenges that feel really big for them, helping them to think about times before that they might have experienced something similar, what might have happened, maybe how they overcame that, what skills and strengths they needed at the time, and then maybe even looking forward to what skills and strengths you can develop as a client to even further support you to achieve these things. So here you're really beginning to kind of start that goal setting process a little bit, really picking those out and digging really deep into that to understand that a little bit more with clients. So if you're creating this for yourself, we'd love to hear in the comments about anything that surprised you, how you found actually the process of creating the circles and thinking about this life that you love. Maybe you love the life you have now. Maybe it's just reaffirmed that for you in some ways. Maybe there's a couple of things you'd like to change or shift or add or grow more of in your life in some ways. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. I actually did this exercise a little bit earlier um, with myself just to kind of go through it a little bit again. And I was really shocked to find three new things kind of popped up that hadn't been there before. And I think it's because I had a pre-COVID life that I loved in circles and then a post-COVID. So of course, this one was a little bit more about traveling, getting out and about with people again, um, and really focusing on fitness and health for a little bit as well. Really kind of feeling fitter and healthier within my own body. So lots of movement kind of things happening there. It's such an amazing thing to do, isn't it? On a sort of regular basis, just to be able to check in with yourself and see how things have changed or how things are going on for you or if anything news come up. Because um, it's quite surprising, isn't it? How often little things can challenge us or little stumbles can get in the way and we don't actually recognize them because we're so used to them just being part of our life. So it's mm -hmm. a great way to have them done on paper and being able to recognize it. I love that terminology, little stumbles, how little stumbles yeah. can get in the way. It doesn't feel so big and no. scary. <laughs> I do like that. <laughs> Okay, so I want to move on to the next one because we've got so much to kind of explore, but if anyone would like to share something in the chat, please do share. And Evie, just um, interrupt and let me know if anything kind of happens. Because um, I don't want to ignore anything and feel like we're ignoring you in some ways there. Okay. So another exercise um, that can be really useful when it comes to assessing, and it's a really simple exercise uh, to work with, uh, really easy to kind of do, is simply where I am versus where I want to be. And for this, again, when I'm sort of beginning to set goals with clients or beginning to look at how they view life or their place in life or, or themselves in their space in life, this is a really great exercise for that as well. So I invite um, the client to take a blank page and to split this in half, if you can imagine this. Maybe you've read this in the book and you've had a go. Um, so to split the page in half, any way that they like. And then on one half of the page, I invite the client to create or draw something that represents where or who they are now. So usually like a symbol or something that's kind of anything that they want to represent who they are in the space right now. And I give them sort of however long they need. Usually they take about five minutes or so to kind of look at this. 
Then on the other half of the page, I invite the client to create or draw something that represents where or who they're working towards or would like to be. I try and use the client terminology as much as, much as I can. So I really tune into kind of the words that the client uses as we're talking. And so I can use that as part of the process so it feels more familiar and friendly to them. And then once you've kind of looked at these two parts, I explore the connector or the bridge that might help them to get there. And I've got like an example here, which was done online. So this was done on canva.com, um, which is a great platform to work with if clients if you're working online, a really easy kind of platform to use. Um, so here's an example where this person chose, and it's not real client work, obviously, um, where this person chose a tree to represent kind of where they are now. And the tree is kind of, it's not got much, um, you know, in their words, kind of beauty on it, much life, much thriving in any way. It's really kind of dry. It's really struggling in some ways. It's really a little bit of a neglected tree, in fact, were the words. Um, and then on the other side, where they would like to be, is this really thriving, dancing, happy, healthy, um, arms up in the air kind of tree. You know, it's giving love, it's receiving love. It's really balanced. It's feeling really bright in the world. It's feeling really strong in the world. And then the connector or the bridge is some of the most important parts in this, because what's going to help the client to move from where they are now to where they want to be when it comes to the symbol. So the symbols of the trees, what do the trees need? Do they need nurture? Do they need more sunlight and movement? Do they need fresh air? Um, do they need more love? What is it that these kinds of um, trees need in some ways? And then exploring what it is that the client needs to help them to move from this feeling really neglected tree to this really thriving, happy, dancing, healthy tree. So maybe think for a moment, if you were to create something where you had a symbol that represented where you are now, and then a symbol that represented where you would like to be or where you would like to see yourself, what those symbols might be for you. So might there be trees? Might you draw stick people? Um, might there be another symbol from nature? Maybe it's a food-based symbol. Maybe it's colors. Maybe you're a color where you are now and there's a color where you would like to get to or to be. Maybe there's a word or a sentence. So just giving you a moment to think about that for a second, to think about those differences. Maybe share something with us in the comments if you'd like to. Let us know. I absolutely you're... love this activity because mm. it's such a great one to do. And it's such a great way to absolutely, you know, explore where you are now and, and give yourself a lot of compassion where you are now, but then find a way to move forward. Kind of have a little think about what's coming next and how, and how you're going to get there. I love it. It's such a great one and can be used with a whole range of people, can't it? In it's so fun. many different settings. So, yeah, mm. love this activity. And it's that importance of sharing or exploring how you're going to get there. Absolutely. Yeah. I think so often we focus on just where we are and how we've got to where we are, that sometimes we forget to work out actually how are we going to move forward and what comes next and what do we need to give ourselves with love, love and compassion to be able to do that instead of just jobs or, um, you know, making things even harder on ourselves. So, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Love this. Sensibility. There's something really autonomous about this as well, really kind of empowering clients mm -hmm. because the information is all coming from the client as it does in many of these creative ways of working. Um, because the client is choosing the symbols, they're choosing the shapes, they're connecting with that, they're creating their connectors. Um, <clears throat> they're actually deciding what it is that they need, what is the bridge they're making those decisions. Uh, and so you're actually really empowering clients to see that they already have those resources and those strengths within themselves. They actually know their own answers. They might just need a little bit of support and encouragement to kind of bring that from an unconscious level to a conscious level. And that's one of the beauties about doing something as simple as this. Absolutely. And how often do, it's so easy for clients to, you know, they can look at an animal or look at a tree or look at a flower and say, well, obviously it needs this and this and this to grow. You know, it needs love, it needs sunlight, as you said before, it needs water. Um, but often I have not actually taken the time to look at themselves and go, okay, well, I, I need that too. So where can I get that? Such a great way to do it. Um, I work with the bridge, but never thought about here and want to be to put in pictures. Brilliant. I also explore with clients about where they are on the bridge stepping onto or maybe somewhere in the middle oh uh, wonderful yeah actually that's really interesting I hadn't thought about actually whereabouts they are on the bridge because maybe they're just at the beginning maybe they're confidently three quarters of the way over that bridge that's a really beautiful I've just had a real visual um kind of boost with that so yeah that feels really powerful thanks for that
Great. Thank you, Sarah. And a great way of extending it, actually, this is where I was and this is where I want to be. And this is where I think I am now. And great to be able to move forward and backwards, isn't it? It's highlighted focus and how to finish things. The bridges to know myself at a deeper level. That's beautiful. Um, which will ground and anchor me further. Fab exercise. Thank you. Wonderful. And also, I mean, some people use uh, like ladders instead. Some people create stone um, kind of bit to hop across. So again, this was created using bridges and um, trees. But I, the term I usually use is the connector. So what's the connector in between the two as well? So my bridge is a river, life giving, flowing and changing in different seasons. Hope that seasons change. Ah, so the bridge is a river. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Wonderful shares. It's so lovely, isn't it, how unique everyone thinks of it. And actually, you know, what's what could be a huge symbol for us could be totally different for someone else. So mm. finding that connector for your clients and really getting them to understand for themselves what feels right for them is so important and so beautiful. And it gives you so much insight into the way a person works as well, which is lovely. Absolutely. So, again, this could take one session. It could take 15, 20 minutes or it could take a few sessions. Um, or it might be something you work over on, you work on over time with clients as well. Mm. Thank you so much for your comments Some really beautiful shares there. Okay, so then we talk in the chapter about number and symbol range assessments. Now, when I first started working with clients, um, one of the core models that I work from is CBT. It's integrated with psychodynamic and person-centered counseling. So I, I studied an integrative way of working um, and we use number assessments a lot. So examples would be literally, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, a client might be experiencing like a real heavy kind of feeling of sadness somewhere in the body and I might say okay whereabouts is that on a number range of zero to ten ten being so deeply sad and zero being absolutely no sadness at all where would you put yourself but later as I started to do the work I realized that there was something really powerful about symbols in the work too so I have a range of different symbols that I've printed off from various places and I laminate them and so we have the symbols lying out in images, um, as you can see on this on the I was about to say on the stage, as you can see on the stage here. Um, and then also I just keep some really simple zero to tens on blank white paper. You could also laminate and use that, but I just keep them on blank white paper. And then the client will pick that and then they'll choose the symbols that also help us to dig a little bit deeper into what's happening for the client's experience. So if you're here, for example, um, I'll hand it over to you for a second, actually, in the chat. What do you pick up on this? What, what are you most drawn to when you look at this? And what do you think might be going on for this client if they were to kind of create something that looked like this? So give us a moment. There's no wrong answers either. Maybe just throw them speed type in the chat so we can see what, what your thoughts are. Anger range spectrum. Oh, I love that. Mm, it's a way of showing it, isn't it? Yeah. And how quickly you can go from one to the other. Mm. Beautiful. Absolutely. And seeing the range of that um, and really picking up on some anger there, if you were to look at that. Yeah. yeah. What comes up for you, Evie, when you look at that? What do you mean? I, I actually, I was so in love with the person in the hammock that I was thinking the rest <laughs> of it probably describes what happens if someone annoyed me when I'm in my hammock. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it can show so much, can't it? Mm. I just love, I love the spectrum, um, as someone's already mentioned. I love that this could show, this could be explaining something over time for you. So if you've been in a traumatic relationship or something like that, it can literally sh show through symbols like this how it can flow where you can go from this really peaceful setting and things start to bubble and your anger comes and then your next picture is maybe nice and peaceful again it's such a great way to be able to see what's happening isn't it hmm. bubbles are beautifully gentle yet carry and move feelings quickly and pop beautiful yes so something really that you picked up on they're really great is the popping of mm. the bubbles and they're gentle Okay, so for this person and their story um, shared, so this person and every day when they're feeling totally chilled out because we wanted a range of assessments started at zero and ended at 10, um, when they're feeling totally chilled out and in control and really cool and calm, they feel like they're swinging on a hammock on a beach. They feel really cool, really calm, really in control in some ways. Then they first start to notice when something's changing in their body and it feels like bubbles. It starts in the pit of the stomach and it works up through the body and it just feels like bubbles. It feels uncomfortable. 
So when that happens, it starts to light a fire and they notice this in the head. So there's like a fire starting to burn. Um, and this can happen really quickly over seconds or it can take a bit of time that things boiling up within them. The next thing they notice when things are getting really serious for them is this tightening of all the body muscles. So mainly the fists, the jaw um, and the rest of the body kind of going into this place of real tightness. Once this happens, they know there's a bang. Now, interestingly, and this was a volunteer, not a client, a volunteer on the team who kind of helped me to put this bit together. Um, so interestingly, the seven to eight was the most important part on the range because they couldn't fill that in initially. There was no understanding of what happens from when they're feeling the sickness and this burning feeling and these bubbles in the body to the bang. They were clueless about the step in between and on working and understanding and thinking about different times and giving that little bit of like, why don't you just think about that the next time you start to experience these bubbles in the fire, see what's missing from this. They were able to confidently kind of share after that it was tensing of the body and that's right before the bang happens um, which they regret and they don't want to get to that place they never want to get to that place and feel regretful and ashamed so a really powerful kind of share for us um, in the session around that and that there are parts often missing on the symbol ranges that are like the clues to what's really going on for clients in some ways so you've got numbers and you've got symbols you might have words you might have colors that might mean more to a client um, in some ways but interestingly also um, for this person uh, we had a bit of a giggle when we were looking at this for the training because they also spoke about they hadn't realized until afterwards the different sizes and the symbols that they chose were important too so it showed how important that fist and that body tensing was that that felt like the key to this person they needed to do something before that tensing up comes or they needed to recognize that tensing up before the bang in some way so that's the largest symbol on there in some ways, which is interesting that it's not the bang or the pop. Mm. It so, is, isn't it? A mm. um, couple of people come in, saw the bubbles are starting to fizz, absolutely, um, and resembles pre-flip lid in brain talk. Yes, it does, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the great thing I think about having symbols like that, this is that you can then work backwards. So if you're feeling the tensing or if you're feeling the bang, what do you need to do to get back? What do you need to do to calm and get back into your hammock? So it's a great way to explore forwards and backwards and work. In between all of them to work out what you need to do to step forward or step back mm. yeah. great idea you can even make a link bang all the way around create a circle back to the hammock yeah so sometimes the bang will happen what do we need to do to be really compassionate to self to forgive and come back to the hammock what do we need to do there oh how do we journey back to the hammock I love that. <laughs> how do we take yeah. the journey back to the hammock, yeah. the yeah. hammock. <laughs> i think you've created an extension on this for sure yeah, yeah. everybody needs a hammock Totally. OK, so also when you're thinking of this as well, um, you could add so many more layers to this. You could add the, ki the, the, the kinds of people who are adding to this, um, who are feeding into the bank, the types of places, the situations people might find themselves in that would start to create the fizzing and the fire. As you can imagine, it could just be something that you just keep on building on for a client. And at the end of sessions, I invite clients to take photos of what they've created as well, in case they wanna take that away and think about it, um, or to kind of redraw on it because the symbols I have are laminated for reuse over and over again with other clients, but maybe they just wanna draw a memory kind of reminder of what this is for them as they're working. And then imagine adding the moments where you've actually been able to interrupt that cycle. This is where the magic comes with clients, really focusing on that, congratulating, really celebrating the moments when they've been able to interrupt that cycle too. Okay, I'm just gonna check the comments to make sure we've not missed anything on there really quickly. Nope, brilliant, okay. So again, looking at um, a carrying on from the number assessments and goal setting, a really simple exercise. Uh, invite your client to represent themselves on a paper as a symbol or even using a blank template. I've got three or four blank templates. One of the ones I'm about to show you is just a blank template I've got, which has just already got um, so like a colored flower on it basically. But I like to actually invite clients to create their own symbols because it's really telling of who they are in the moment and what they're experiencing. So blank piece of paper, represent themselves in the paper somehow. Invite the client to add all of the things that they feel is weighing them down. And I might just speed this up so you can see the flower set makes sense. There we go. Um, 
and invite the client to circle their top three struggles that they're facing in this moment. And this might change, but in this moment today, what are those struggles? So as you can see, for this person, they've chosen this flower design, which is just one of the templates I have around for kind of drawing on. Um, and then they filled in all of the things that are really kind of bugging them or weighing down on them or causing stress in some ways to each of those petals. And the cool thing about it is there's lots of other little petals on the page. So if you've got a client that actually needs to write a lot down, there's lots of other options on here as a template. Then inviting the client to really circle their top three. So if you were sitting with a client and working with this, you have three really clear things and they've also numbered in, in kind of line of importance, which are the things that they really want to kind of look at. So you already know the client is struggling with um, anger in the perception, maybe somebody said that, or maybe it's what they're experiencing, not feeling good enough and struggling with a new diagnosis of something. So you have three really clear things to kind of start to begin to look at. But also there's some other things kind of hanging around that could be important as you get to know your client too. So other things that are really good for this, um, anything to do with like ladders or anything like that, because you've got lots of different kind of steps that people can use in this as well. Um, any symbol at all, a tree in the roots, the tangled roots, for instance, is a great one. Um, just using a simple circle and kind of getting them to color out like a pie, because they'll color a maybe a bigger chunk for anger and a, a smaller chunk for not good enough and an even smaller chunk for diagnosis, maybe you just don't know. So even just having a plain circle and inviting them to fill that in is a really kind of good way to get started with this really simple and easy tool. Yeah, how would you work online with clients with something like this? Would you use something like Canva or something? How would you work um, in a way that you can see what your clients are doing when working yeah. online? So, I mean, really simple. I invite the client to draw on a piece of paper for themselves. You know, draw yourself on a piece of paper, uh, fill in the exercise, carry it on. And then if they feel comfortable, I invite them to kind of hold it up to the camera and show me what they've created. And we talk through that together. Another way, if they digitally... Um, really love to be digital, uh, then they can use the Zoom screen and draw on and annotate on Zoom, which is really useful because you can see and interact in that in the moment. Um, if they're on Canva, they could choose a background like this. This is from Canva uh, and then work on that and add their words and things like that. But that's usually I find um, for people who are more confident on things like Canva, it's really easy to work with. But you don't want to get weighed down in the tech, do you? That's the thing. You don't want to have to spend so time, so much time supporting clients to get to know the tech that kind of takes away from the session. So as usual, it's important to be able to work with whatever the client, you know, if you've got a client who's really tech savvy, something like Canva could be great because you can watch them doing it as they're doing it and explaining it to you. Um, and if not, then, yeah, then using pens and paper. Um, someone else has suggested as well, or use virtual sand trays. Um, absolutely. There's so many different things online nowadays, isn't there? So many different programs and stuff that you can use. Um, to support and enable your clients but again it, yeah it does come down to how much your client is able to how confident they are on a computer um, and how able they are to do everything that needs doing yeah and the great thing with anything creative as well is, is you can always keep it simple really keep it simple if a client's got a pen and paper you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of exercises that you can do to support them to explore everything from relationships to goals to um, feelings and emotions to uh, just everything and anything that, that the client might need to explore remembering that you are the creative um, kind of uh, tool within the room you're, you or you are the thing that brings the energy to the sessions. So as confident as you are in being able to bring these different creative things and just following your intuition, you get a little intuition, a little ding, a little spark of something that this might be useful for a client. Just go with it and put it in the client's language. Whatever they're using, work with that. Whatever their interests are, work with that in some way. So the shapes might be different depending on the client and what they're bringing to Absolutely. Um, could you explain what Canva is, please, for people who don't know? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to type it in the comments for you quickly as well so you can see it. So it's www.canva.com. So it's actually created as a design tool for people who have websites or social media accounts. It's a really brilliant tool. Uh, you can go in there and create your own social media posts. It's filled with hundreds and hundreds of images, which are royalty free to use. Um, lots of little elements, like little bursts of things and all the bubbles and all the design you're seeing today is from Canva um, as well. And lots of different kinds of ways that you can explore working. For instance, you can 
uh, use a photo background of a sand tray for clients um, and clients can take control and basically add different symbols that are in there. So it's not meant as a therapeutic tool, but we use it a lot as a therapeutic tool. It's a really, really great way to do that. Uh, you do need a, an account, which is free to join. However, if you're going to use it therapeutically, I always say upgrade. Um, because you will need to upgrade. I think it's about nine quid or something to get access to everything on it. And so for my clients who are technologically, they like to work technologically, I always check if they've got a Canva account already. And if they do, that's great. We work with it because they're already paying. Um, I don't tend to say to clients, you know, would you like to go and pay for a Canva account so we can use it? I'll just work more organically with paper, old school. Um, but if clients have an account already, then we use that. And to be honest, 80% plus of my clients have Canva accounts. So it makes it a lot easier to work with. Absolutely. Um, but if it is something new to you, do take your time to explore the site and get to know it and how everything works and how you move things around. So if your client does have questions or anything for you, you're able to support them with that. Okay, great question. So next, one of my absolute favourites. Have I said that on everyone just yet? Because I think they're all my favourite questions. <laughs> it's such a lovely, it's such a lovely area to work with, isn't it? I think all of it, all of it has to be a favourite. <laughs> yeah, it just depends on what the client brings in some way. So this is a hopes and dreams board. So if you're working physically in the room, then great collage exercise, get the magazines out, the newspapers. Uh, if you've got printers, they can print things from anywhere they find online to add to their hopes and dreams board. But if you imagine the journey of this client kind of being in the room and the goal is to invite them to think about their hopes and their dreams going forward. And again, goals and kind of getting to understand where a client wants to get to is very much forward, forward looking in some ways. So we're giving them a creative way to do that with a little bit of support and distance. So, for instance, on this board, I'm curious as to what you pick up for this person. If this was their hopes and dreams board, what do you pick up that is living within their kind of um, future dreams and goals in some way. So give you a moment, speed type in, in the comments, maybe. <laughs> you can see what you're picking up on. I have to say, I'm very torn between the lovely dogs and the lovely woman and her waterfall. I think <gasps> I could just mush those two together. That would be my, my happy place. But that and the hammock. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd need a hammock on this as well. Yeah, yeah. need that in there too. Yeah. And there's so much from this. If you even look at the shapes, the sizes of things, there's quite a bit of balance on here. There's colors, there's movement, um, there's expressions and emotions in some so way. Much, so much going on. And someone has said, I pick up independence and freedom. Love that. Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. Relationship, home, qualification and family. Mm. They could want to travel. Oh, sorry. Everything's pinging at the same time now. <laughs> I'm so sorry I'll do that again they could want to travel have pets get an education engage in relationships and have a home become a vet traveling photography a photography hobby friendships traveling capturing memories connections relationships love self-improvement and being free I love the connection and laughter and make some fun time so lots of connection and laughter and relationship going on fun moving forward achievements mm. it's so quite a positive board isn't it that people are picking up on mm. and, and you kind of hope so in a hopes and dreams board but you have to prepare yourself for it not being positive too depends on where the client is and, and how they see themselves in the world and what they're able to achieve so it might give you insight into just how much a client's struggling or how much they're able to possibly look forward as well um so interestingly there's like some people mentioned obviously um like a qualification and then someone else mentioned like achievement. So a really great example of how maybe, and it could be different for you, I'm just kind of guessing here. Um, if you were to see an image with like a uni cap on it, for instance, would that mean qualification? Would that mean achievement? Would that mean completing something? They could mean totally different things in some ways. It could be people pleasing someone else for a parent or another significant person in their world. So we check and we go into everything that's there. But absolutely for this person, it was about becoming a vet. It was about um, learning how to do photography because they really love to do photography. Um, it's about traveling and going to new places. It's about going back to uni and finishing uni. Uh, maybe this person wasn't able to finish uni for some reason and they really want to get back there. Um, it's about feeling more confident and able to travel alone and do things and be reliant on self. 
build better friendships with people. And then really importantly, there's this significant yellow door in the middle of this hopes and dreams board. So for this person, the door is the barrier because they cannot cross that door to get into the world. So we see the hopes and dreams, but also unconsciously this barrier has kind of appeared in the middle of the page. And if you imagine, sometimes I always say, pay attention to what's in the middle of anything a client creates. If we think about what the middle means, it means the center of something often, not always, but often. It means often the most significant something in an exercise too. Um, so it's about really looking at what that thing is for that person and it's bright yellow, so you can't miss it. So this could be a significant barrier for this person kind of reaching these places. So really simple way to involve creativity again, to really help clients to understand what it is that they're dealing with and where they want to be and giving you a really great opportunity to help them to look at how they might be able to do that. Thank you for your shares as well. Really great to kind of see those. So powerful. And you can do it so many ways as well. You could, you know, they could go through a magazine and, and cut up loads of bits. They can go online again. There's so many different ways that you can collect your images or words or whatever you want to use to be able to do yes. it. Yeah. Okay. So this one has a little bit of an emotional story for me. So um, I created this one day. Um, it was actually in 2012. And I was supporting someone in my life who I'm very bonded to. Um, and this person was needing to leave school and to kind of be away from school and be at home. They were kind of that significantly impacted by the trauma of school that they needed to be away and at home. And there was significant pressure to not leave and to have to stay in school. And there was all sorts of threats going on and everything like this um, for this person. And so we created a, um, a little story called A Day in the Life of Me. And this person hand wrote what it was like to wake up in the morning, what happened from the minute they woke up in the morning, even to the point of what you eat and where you go and who you see, what happens driving to school, what that felt like, what happens arriving, when, what that felt like walking in through the school door, finding a classroom, sitting in a classroom, the people there, the smells there, everything that was happening, leaving to find the next room and the next challenge that they were going to have to face, going into the school ground and um, having to be on their own, for, for example, or hiding in some cases as well, kind of wishing that the break would end, going back into a classroom, going through the whole process of a day, leaving at the end of the day as if they'd been hit by a sledgehammer, like totally drained of energy, exhausted, feeling awful, having to make their way home, feeling sick, not being able to concentrate on homework because of all the emotions they're dealing with, wanting to sleep the rest of the day and evening away, not being able to sleep or eat, and then having to start the whole process again the next day. So once we'd created this a day in the life of me, we were able to give that to people who could make decisions and give that to people to really understand what was happening for this person. And since then, in 2012, through all of the kind of work that I did in support roles and then counselling, um, I've used this as a really powerful exercise to understand um, what is going on for a client as I begin to get to know them as well. We can do this in pictures. So sometimes I'll invite clients to go away from um, the room and the session and to collect pictures and images from in, the, in between the sessions, so in the weeks in between. Um, and we'll kind of look at that together. So maybe there was they were drawn to taking a picture of trainers for some reason about walking and something about that. Maybe there's a tree, maybe there's a song they listen to. Uh, maybe it's a picture of their sibling or whoever it is. So you can do it in picture format or you can kind of write it out like a story. You can give it different characters if they want a bit of distance from that even. Say they don't want to actually name themselves in the story give a little bit of distance in that by creating different characters and kind of writing this out so you get to understand a little bit about really assessing what an entire day is like for this person that you're working with. And it's incredible the amount of information you get from this, the feelings, the emotions, the important significant people that play a role in that person's life within the day. Um, and really helping the client even to underline certain things that were really impactful within that day too. So if you've ever used anything like this, let us know in the comments if you use something similar um, in that. I think in schools now they do like one page profiles and things like that as well. Unfortunately, that wasn't available to us in 2012 um, when we were looking for ways to support this person. Um, but yeah, this is just as powerful when you think. Do you think it. this could work as well? Kind of an hour in the life of me. I'm thinking as well, you know, for supervisors, with their supervisees, especially when you're going through training and just starting and you don't understand why you're feeling overwhelmed 
overwhelmed or like burnt out what a great way to actually get them to sit and write the experience of going to you know going to spend the night before waking up in the morning all the emotions you go through everything that happens before you actually get in the room with your clients or whoever it is that you're seeing um and then the whole come down afterwards so what a great way to actually physically have it in front of you and go wow i didn't even realize i was experiencing all of that stuff no wonder I'm feeling overwhelmed at the end of the session or no wonder I'm feeling however it is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anything, if, if, if a client supervisee yourself um, feels the need to just sit and write or you're drawn to it. I mean, writing is so therapeutic in itself. Um, so anything that helps you or your client or your supervisee to express in some ways any part of their life is absolutely wonderful and beautiful to do that um, and again you could do a week in the life of me so a week between sessions what even is that like maybe the weekend is the issue for the client so it's a weekend in my life whatever it is so just kind of get to the nitty-gritty of the details you're also empowering them with writing skills which is really important so that beginning to be able to move something from the body and the brain onto paper so it no longer sits kind of going over and over and getting stuck in the brain you're helping them to express it in a way especially when they're not in the room with you and they might need an outlet mm. wonderful thing is that i think so often we have all, all of the stuff going on in our lives and we don't actually take the time to sit and actually realize and connect with what's happening in our head and what's happening in our body so i love this activity it's a great way for people to actually sit and read their own words to go wow i didn't even realize yeah and i think what we'll do as well for anyone after we'll add the slides into the certificate download when we send that to you if you're watching live with us we'll send you the slides for this as well um just in case it's useful uh for any of the kind of reminders of anything we've spoken about in there okay so we're almost in our last 10 minutes. So I feel like I have to speed talk now yeah. <laughs> really quickly. So nature metaphors. If you've ever worked with nature metaphors, they're really, really wonderful way to help us to explore how we're feeling um, or how similar we are to something, basically. Real quick in the moment assessment of something for clients in some ways. So it could be I'm feeling as angry as client might finish that with lightning. Maybe the client says, I'm just feeling so angry. I just, oh, I can't. You know, I can't explain to you. You wouldn't understand just how angry this is. So, okay, if your anger was like something from nature, so like something you see in nature that could help you to explain this anger, what might that be? And they might say, well, it's like feeling as angry as lightning in some ways. Um, so also a really great thing that we're working on, actually, we'll get this out to you, is a load of little metaphor um, kind of symbols that you can download and laminate because it's really great for metaphor work. Uh, so you'll be able to download those. They'll be free in our membership um, and you'll be able to laminate those and use those for yourself when you work with clients because it gives them something to pick as an image to end these kind of sentences with too. Maybe my anxiety feels as loud as a woodpecker in my head. I actually used this myself not that long ago, about six months ago is where this came from because um, something was happening and it was just so annoying for me in my life. And I thought immediately of a symbol of a woodpecker that just will not stop pecking at that wood, basically. Um, and so symbols, we work in metaphor and symbols all the time. Our brain is geared and wired to do that in some ways. Uh, we have a few questions that have come in um, quickly. Uh, if people uh, would like to watch uh, today or listen to today's session again and replay, how can they do that? So they can do that by going on our website, createcounselors.org. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go on there. And if you go, I think it's under the term connect and you'll find the book club under there. It's got all the future book clubs and also the replays for you as well. I'm also seeing a question about a page number yeah. um, for the book, My Day. I don't think I actually put that in this chapter. No, I was just having a little look through trying to find it. <laughs> I've got like metaphors and that in there, but no, these are a little bonus. For you. Send it out, can't we? We can um, put it yeah, on. Come in your PowerPoint as well. Lovely. So I'm as friendly as a cactus, for example. Squishy on the inside. There is friendliness there. Maybe a bit prickly on the outside. Maybe you've got to work on me a little bit before I let you in. She was as trustworthy as a snake. Hmm. Maybe there's two sides. Everything has two sides. I wonder if snakes are ever trustworthy in some ways. Be interesting. Yeah, I think snakes get a lot of, of bad rep. They get a bad rap, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I'm as nervous as a caged lion. So there's fierceness there. Like if you think about lions, for me, they um 
they're quite powerful kind of creatures and so to cage one you're really caging that power away in some ways so if a, if if a lion if a lion was to come into my session and talk to me about feeling caged what I meant to say was a client if a client came into the session and spoke to me about being caged like a lion I think wow okay there's some kind of power kind of dynamic and play going on there as well could be maybe not Life feels as hopeless as a choking tree. Really powerful one. So you can begin to see how powerful metaphors are to use. And they really help clients to fill in the gaps when maybe they're really struggling to find the terminology to express or explain something as well. Mm. Um, uh, someone has put um, sad as. They can't think of a metaphor for that. Oh, I would say to a weeping willow. Yeah, they're such a personal thing, aren't they? That it could be anything. Yeah. It's something yeah. that's sad to you. Yeah. A heavy cloud, a lost puppy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, what else is there? A muddy puddle ignored. I love my, yeah, I was going to say, I love muddy puddles. Ignored muddy puddles. Puddle. Puddle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's one that gets ignored at tough muddy. That's what we're going with. It's the puddle no one runs in. That <laughs> is a drooping flower. Yeah, wonderful. Well, not empty wonderful. nest. Absolutely. A river and flood. Sorry. Mm, yes. And an empty nest. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. A broken wing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you can see there's so many things. You could get lost in this. You could, can you? In some ways, yeah. Okay. So we've just got a couple more to kind of look at really quickly. Um, so thinking about timeline of skills and strengths. So how often do you find clients that come into the room um, who can't kind of who focus on a lot of the things that they've experienced in their world, but they can't sort of begin to see what skills and strengths they needed or they have that enables them to really kind of move through life and through all this adversity and challenge. So I like to use this kind of idea of working with timelines to deepen it even a little bit more by adding strengths and skills. So if you're working with timelines with a client, you've invited them to create a timeline on a page, so a line in some ways, to have a start and an end date, which might be today's date. Um, and then for this, for example, you might be looking at what the client has faced, what adversity they faced, what pain and what struggles they faced. Maybe helping them to kind of hone down on some of the areas they, they kind of want to look at and talk about and release in some ways. So you can see lots of things happening here. So importantly, then what skills and strengths did you need to overcome this? So very often in my experience, clients really struggle to actually find their skills and strengths even their values and their qualities in some ways, um, because they've struggled with their confidence for so long in some ways. Maybe they've never heard that. We even had time to focus on the good parts of themselves. Uh, so something that can be really useful to help us to do that uh, is to actually look at values cards. And you can get these in lots of different kind of um, ways. The values cards are on Amazon, I believe, and in other places. Um, but also you find lots of kind of free downloads across the internet now with literally just blank pieces of paper with lots of values or personal qualities that we can have as people. So I use the values cards once we've created a timeline and invite clients to flip through them and to pick up any strengths that they noticed. So these things like compassion, resilience, one of my favorite um, terms, which I've written on another piece of things, bounce back ability, the ability to bounce back from anything that happens. Maybe there's loving, maybe there's kindness, maybe there's, I don't know if I said patience, um, maybe there's strength, maybe there's trust, um, maybe there's openness in some ways. So all these different skills that we develop um, because we've been pushed and pushed and pushed and our resilience tested in some ways that we've had to really overcome that. And clients are often kind of relieved in some way when they realize that they have got these strengths because they have had to overcome many of these things in their world in their life so let's draw on those strengths and let's kind of grow those and really focus on those and even grow those even deeper and more powerfully as we go forward you can always come back to this with clients as well to remind them if they have a wobble a little bit later on in sessions um, where they don't feel like they have any skills and strengths so hang on let's just have a think about that huge list that you created in that exercise we did on that timeline let's just bring that back for a moment and really kind of remind ourselves of just the incredible gifts that you have for the world let's look at that together why is it that we're so good at labeling all of our faults and all the things that we can't do in life but when it comes down to just easily firing off the things we're really good at often yeah. people struggle so hard don't they yes exactly exactly human nature 
that's human nature in some ways. And finally, my life circle. So this is a really simple exercise. Invite your client to create a circle on a sheet of paper, which is big enough to fit all of their world within. Interestingly, some clients might create tiny little circles and some clients might fill the entire sheet with a circle just on that prompt. Really interesting to see where they are. Invite your client to add any people who have had an impact on them within that circle. So pets or anything else that the client chooses that are important for them too. And invite them to add any memories, places, etc. that feel important for them too. And finally, just anything at all that feels important for them. So this is my life or my world circle, whatever title you want to give it. A circle inviting the client to fill it up with all of the important, especially people that have been kind of significant or had an impact. This could be negative or positive. It, they'll go where they want to go with us. And it'll give you a real opportunity to kind of have a look, uh, eagle's eye view into what's been happening in their world for them as well. And what they deem to be significant, impactful and important to them. So that is all of the kind of assessment tools today that I tend to use quite a lot. There are some other kind of things here and there. And of course, if you're working creatively and intuitively, then you're gonna just be following your client's lead. So if a client shares something in interest, maybe they share love for photography, you might pop out um, a blank template with just a camera on it and ask them to take a snapshot of how they're feeling in the moment, for example. Um, do you want to doodle exactly how you're feeling in the moment? Let's fill this in. What might that look like as a snapshot? It's that kind of thing of being intuitive and staying with the client and kind of using their term terminology and their passion and their interests. So thank you so much for listening to that this evening as we've explored lots of assessments. Um, if you've got any questions, we'd love to hear those from you. Um, and we'll be hanging around for a little bit. We've got one more minute to go. So I'm really proud that we hit it in the time. Um, but we're here if you've got some questions as well. And if you're watching this on playback, then we'd love to hear your comments. Join us back in our membership or community. Um, and we'd love to kind of keep the conversation going. Absolutely. Um, how often do you think you use assessments within your sessions? Is it something you do all the time? Is it something you kind of structure in? I think it's something we use absolutely, I use absolutely in every single session, even if even if it is on a scale of one to 10, what's that like for you in the moment as you describe that? So you share that that was so impactful for you. And I'm just trying to get a, a visual of how impactful this is when you go like this. Is it this big? I don't know if you can see me on screen at the minute. Is it this impactful, this impactful, like even using your hands? to kind of see, because when clients are sharing things with me, I get my own view of what they're saying, but more important, I need to know their view. I need to know what it is for them and how they're experiencing it so I can understand and how to support. Absolutely. Um, so lots of comments coming in, lots of people saying thank you for another inspiring session. Um, so helpful and thank you so much. Lots to think about. Um, we use yeah, we use them all the time. Absolutely. So powerful. Thank you. Lots of thank yous coming in. Um, thank you. This has been really helpful. I'm very new to creative interventions and this has made me feel more confident to introduce things. Brilliant. Oh, so great to hear that. Uh, lots of thank you. Thank you for your fabulous ideas. Really enjoyed the session. Thank you both so much. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. Hoping whatever you're doing is going to be wonderful. Thank you. Another inspiring session. Thank you all for being with us as well. And we hope you all have an amazing weekend, whatever it is that you're getting up to. I hope you all get to have some time on your bank holiday weekend. You get some time to yourself, which will be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Important mm -hmm. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, lots of lots of thank you. So your replay will be up as mentioned before, for you to access whenever you would like. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Okay, I'm going to stop the share and come back and we'll stop the recording from there. Okay. Thank you all.